Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and Chuck E. Cheese's employee of the month, Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great because it's someone special's birthday today. Thank you, yes. <laughs> this is what 48 looks like, unfortunately. Yes, it does. Yeah, and And the body is already breaking down. I, uh, Slowly. We, we do, oh God, this was so embarrassing. We do <laughs> on uh, Facebook, we do a show called The Jason Show Before the Show Show Show. And it's, um, we live stream our pre-show meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's usually unedited, huh, always unedited. And uh, anything, anything can happen. So we're sitting at the meeting today. Mm -hmm. And I'm obviously in a good mood. It's, mm -hmm. it's the birthday, blah, blah, blah. I'm spending time with some family and friends this weekend. And uh, I sit down and we didn't, didn't we? We went we live. We said hello. We barely said hello. Uh -huh. And I had a coughing fit. Like, I, I sounded like I was 110 years old. Uh -huh. and, <laughs> and you know when that happens to you and you can't stop? No. I had to excuse myself from the meeting. Mm -hmm. I had to like run down the hallway. Everyone's looking at me like, oh God, carry your monkey. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you just say. <laughs> So I'm fine. I'm negative. I've been testing all week. I, I've told you I haven't been feeling great mm -hmm. today. I actually feel wonderful. So Jeff has given me a baby bottle of water just in case another one. Thank God. Mm -hmm. This replaces the baby bottle of vodka that's usually right here. That's ask. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's is that up here too? That's in okay. my mini bar. People Thank always God. yeah. People sometimes ask, Jason, what's under your desk? Mini bar. You it's don't a, yeah, I have, mm -hmm. I have uh, uh, high priced Snicker bars under here. Yes. I have, you know how expensive everything is in a hotel room? Yes. I have that down here. You got to keep the host and the guests happy. That's right. Mm -hmm. I have a $20 Twix bar. In. Thank you, Leo, for taking a shot of the desk. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a little mini fridge down there, a little no coffee maker. So, other than having a cough attack, how do you feel today? Uh, you know what? As I said, I'm. Um, I feel grateful because I've been feeling a little crappy all week. So I'm grateful that I woke up this morning feeling really like the best I felt all week. Mm -hmm. And then again, you can't help but feel good when you walk into work and people clap for you. I mean, you know what I mean? And you have these people. Yeah. So. Right. Oh. Oh, I, and when people leave birthday gifts in your <coughs> office, that's okay. nice too. So Kendall's calling me out because, uh -huh. so here's the deal. Mm -hmm. I got into work. Um, I do the radio show because for people that don't know, I do a radio show as well. I, uh, uh, Jason and Alexis in the morning on my talk. Um, that's 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then I get an hour, you know, I have a little hour between shows and then I do this show. Anyway, but I do that radio show from here at Fox. So I get in this morning. And first, I open up my little man, my little man purse, my little purse, and the and the husband has left probably the sweetest card that he's ever given me. It was the sweet, yeah. It was really, really. I'm not a big card person. Sorry, mom. My mom, Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mom is the biggest card person ever. But anyway, I am not. Uh, but Colin gave me a really sweet card, so I'm reading that, and then at my radio desk, I see a present, a gift bag, and a. Um, and a card. Mm -hmm. So I open up the card and I'm reading. I'm like, oh, this is very sweet. But I'm like, who is this from? Like, I can't read the name. 
And I'm uh -huh. like, okay, well, I'll figure it out later. And then there's a lovely candle in there. Mm -hmm. So I start smelling the candle. I open it up. I put it in the radio room. And I move on. So we get into the meeting before the coughing fit. And Kendall goes, did you like your present? Mm -hmm. And I went, what present? And she goes, the one in your room. I go, oh, my God, was that from you? But... I couldn't, it didn't say Kendall. No. Tell them what you wrote. Um, I signed my name Padawan. <laughs> it's a Jedi, <laughs> it's a Jedi reference, yeah. Jason is the master Jedi and I am Padawan. And so when I told him it was me, he goes, you, like, I could not read your name. I was like, because it wasn't no. my name. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Paddington. <laughs> like, what is this? Like, a like damn bear? bear is leaving me presents? Like, what is this? But. Like, <laughs> It's very sweet. Thank you, sweet. Hilarious. I couldn't think of anybody better to spend the 10 a.m. hour of my birthday with than you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Me too. Ha, ah, Jeff. Hear that? Me. Yeah. Pick me. Yeah. You right there. Let's get started, everybody. <laughs> it's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. <laughs> Tastes like birthday cake today. Well, you know what I tell you. If anything interesting happens over there on The View, I'll let you know because I don't want you watching that show. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, they finally named their new permanent co-host. And first up, former Trump White House political strategist, Alyssa Farah Griffin. Look. Hey. Welcome to the table. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If anyone had ever told me I'd be sitting at a table with Whoopi Goldberg, I would have said, you are crazy. <laughs> it is such an honor to be with you ladies every day on this set. Now, people, and she, she, defend, she has defended herself before, um, you know, because some of her critics said, oh, because you were, in the Trump, you were in the Trump White House, you shouldn't have a seat. I don't buy that. I don't think that's fair. Um, she was very cordial to the new president. She's fair-minded, uh, even though, she, you know, she's a conservative, but she plays it down the line. And I happen to like her. And I'm, again, glad that there is a conservative voice on The View, but they weren't done, surprisingly, they named a second co-host as well. We were proud to make another long due over announcement. What did I say? Oh, long no, over no, long no. over. I'm dyslexic, sorry. Uh, that Anna Navarro is becoming an official co-host of the group. It's about time. Anna. Anna and, uh, and uh, Griffin have been uh, frequent fill-in hosts. Anna's been there for like 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad because this tells, you know, she researches well. The, the scuttlebutt is that ABC did research. People love her. Even people that don't agree with her points of view, they really enjoy her because she just, she just tells it like it is. She does, I mean, and, and you don't have to like everything she says. That's why the show is called The View. Mm -hmm. But ABC obviously backed up the truck to her house because she loves, she, they did. They made a really good deal because she didn't, she's turned down offers before because she loves living in Florida. She loves her life in Coral Gables. So I think ABC, I would love to see the deal. I think ABC cut some deal with her where she's gonna be able to maybe do the show from her house in a little studio uh, a couple times a year. So either way, congratulations to both of them. And I'm glad for the first time in that show's history, it's a more balanced view. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a Absolutely. more. Next. Still don't watch that show, but I mean, I'm glad it's there, yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish, you'll soon have a little uh, extra room on your streaming platform uh, list. Warner, Warner Brothers Discovery, you know, they're one big company now, announced that they're gonna merge HBO Max and Discovery Plus into one Godzilla-sized <laughs> streaming service. Now, it won't happen until next summer. Uh, they're also considering uh, an ad-free and an ad-supported version, meaning commercials, no commercials. We don't know the price. We don't know the name of it. I don't even know what I would name it. I'm usually, I love stuff like this. I don't even know what I would name it. Would you go with Warner Brothers? Warner Brothers Plus? Mm, no? No, I don't think so. I feel like HBO is the real legend, but then you don't figure out the discoveries there. I don't know. See, that's why, guys, that's what I'm telling you. I know everyone was for older. That's why I think Warner Brothers might be the way to go. I mean, everybody knows that is a, that's like Fox and 20th Century Fox and Disney. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the Warner Brothers shield. Then you can put everything under it. That's true. And it sounds like they're starting first off before they merge everything. They're going to put some Discovery content on HBO, like the Magnolia stuff, and then burl some stuff from Discovery. I mean, they're going to kind of mix them together to get people interested already. Well, and they're also thinking of doing, you know, that Pluto TV, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that, that's a Paramount spinoff. 
that's all free and they do like there's a Johnny Carson channel there's a Price is Right Bob Barker channel Warner Brothers is thinking of doing that with their library like putting oh. using their library and creating a, a you know a free service like Pluto that's supported by ads I would totally do that you know why well you know why I would do it why because Warner Brothers owns Dallas and not oh Miami. my god that's right yeah yeah <laughs> Should have known. Warner Brothers, we want Knott's Landing on streaming. Finally, please, yes. Do they still have that, like, hidden YouTube channel? What? Didn't you find a YouTube channel that had all the Knott's Landing, like oh, someone sent it to you? Shh. Oh. <laughs> it's no, secret. it's illegal. Oh. No. <laughs> no, Kendall, there is no YouTube network that has all the Knott's Landing episodes. <laughs> that does not exist. <laughs> X nay on the ot nay. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take a break. We have much more ahead. Stay right there. Back in a moment. We are just getting started. Coming up next, wait till you see what triggered a corner of the internet yesterday. Uh, the clue: sausage. Then Kendall tries another nine to five. This time, she's coming face to face. with polar bears. And then it's game time. Can the audience guess which celebrities are younger or older than me? That and more when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back. So Stephen Colbert's old boss, uh, is now running CNN. He's the big wig over there. And a new report says that uh, he may be trying to lure Stephen to CNN. You know, come over here, come over here. So Colbert talked about that last night, look. Well, we have a hot scoop from Radar Online, the web's number one site for TV industry news and hot air traffic controller gossip. Radar is reporting Chris Licht is looking to me, Stephen Colbert, for help in rescuing the network. Don't worry, Chris. I got this. I know CNN Plus wasn't a hit, but have you considered CNN minus? <laughs> Even better, give me Anderson Cooper's time slot. But keep him there, too, okay? I'm a huge fan. I'll just bring Andy Cohen and a bottle of tequila. <laughs> Every night will be New Year's Eve. That sounds good to me. Sound, sound good to you, Anderson? <laughs> nope. Sure doesn't. <laughs> uh, Steven also said there's absolutely no truth to the rumors. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's not going to happen. No. And, and Steven's under contract with CBS. He does mm -hmm. very well for CBS. The Tiffany Network's not going to let him go, for nope. heaven's sake. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen. Let's keep the dish going. Joining me now all the way from Hollywood, give it up for Jacob from TMZ. Hi, Jacob. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, Jason? Buddy. So, our show is not only in Minnesota and Seattle, but we're also in Wisconsin. And we begin, thank you, Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers says uh, a psychedelic drug helped him play better last season? What? Yes, so for those who are watching in Wisconsin and who are watching in Minnesota as well, uh, people know that Aaron Rodgers has been on an absolute tear these past two NFL seasons, winning back-to-back -back MVPs. And he's saying his secret sauce is ayahuasca, uh, a hallucinogenic plant that he took in South America. Uh, this is pretty incredible. And I mean, this is a serious psychedelic, which contains DMT. And he says he went to South America and was led by a shaman and went into this journey thinking, n not uh, asking himself, how can I be the best quarterback, but rather how can I f uh, find the purest form of love? And said that through this journey, he was able to get in touch with his ancestors. He felt like hundreds of hands were touching him. It sounds a little scary to me, but he says he came out of it a better teammate, a better lover, uh, a better uh, leader. Uh, so uh, listen, I mean, I don't know if he's necessarily endorsing it for other players to use, but it seems like it worked out for him. I think we're going to try it for season eight. <laughs> yeah, Marshall, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm actually pretty speechless on that one. I don't even, <laughs> the audience and I are just trying to process everything that you said. So <laughs> I'm rarely speechless. That one got me. Um, let's move. Neo uh, is dealing with some serious allegations from his wife. She filed for divorce. What did she say? So his wife and uh, Crystal Renee, she has some damning allegations which we obtained in these court documents yesterday. She's filing for divorce uh, again. And this time she's saying that Neo has had a child with another woman. Uh, keep in mind, Crystal and Neo have three children together who she claims she's primarily taking care of. And right now she's asking the judge for primary custody in addition to alimony and joint custody moving forward. Um, but this is, yeah, like you said, I mean, this is a serious allegation. Uh, keep in mind, these two have had their ups and downs. Uh, Crystal filed for divorce back in 2020, but then uh, withdrew to divorce. They got remarried in 2022, but something tells me this is the last straw. Yeah, that's those crazy kids aren't going to make it. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, an unlikely baseball card could be getting big bucks at an auction. Who is on that card, Jacob? Unlikely is right. Uh, you might be thinking, which MLB player is this? But this is actually Mark Zuckerberg, one of the richest people in the world. And as you can see here, this is Mark as a nine-year-old at a uh, camp when he was... <laughs> uh, this is Mark when he was nine years old, when he was uh, at camp in Westchester, New York. And listen, I mean, you might think, who cares about this baseball card? Why would anyone want this? He was a great player, and his stats show it. I mean, if you look on the back of the card, he, it says he got 23 out of 25 hits. Uh, I mean, those are pretty impressive stats, if you ask me. And uh, apparently, if you're thinking, who has this card? It's one of Mark's old camp counselors who has been holding on to this now for years. It's been making for great conversation, apparently, uh, bringing it up. Uh, but anywho, uh, it's hitting the market now, and it's just so rare that they don't even know what to sell it at. Bidding starting at a dollar, and who knows how it's going to go. I, Jacob, I, I, I'm speechless again. Actually, I, I yeah, wow. yeah. Have a good weekend, my friend. Give it up for you Jacob, too. everybody from TMZ. More of these stories at TMZ.com. How much would you pay for that? That is so creepy. That man just held on to this child's baseball card for all these years. It is a little creepy, Carl. There is that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And there's like, how much, I, what is it going to go for? I don't know. Someone will definitely pay a lot of money for it, though. That's how sad everything is in the world. Yeah, very well. I have another example of that coming up in a minute. But right now, more dish. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Lisa Rinna is admitting to the world that she's a hot mess on social media. <laughs> This is breaking news. <laughs> she talked about it Wednesday night on Watch What Happens Live. Look at this. You Andy. make so much trouble for yourself. Andy, I've just been a nightmare right now. That's all I can okay. tell you. Okay. I have been a flipping nightmare. I know it. Okay. I acknowledge it. I have tried to fix it as much as I can. Okay. I'm fully aware. I'm fully self-aware that I am a mess right now. I'm just a mess. Okay. So let's hope it gets better. Let's hope. I mean, I guess you I know say. what the funny thing is. You know, all right. Well, guess what? I have headline news for you. It's what? all in your hands. I it's know. In your You can tell, like, like me, and you, Andy hides nothing. Mm -hmm. I think Andy is legitimately kind of irritated with her. Because one of the things she did on social media, remember, was accuse Bravo of not paying enough tribute to her mom, which they did. And then, I, I won't belabor this, just in case you don't watch Housewives, this episode that aired this week, I, you guys know I have been a big Rena supporter, even when she drives everybody else crazy. I'm done. I'm done for a while. She was so out of line this week, so out of line. Sutton may drive people crazy, but what Lisa did this week, and if you go, if you look at her, uh, if you Google her name or put her name in Twitter, people are ripping her, and they should. It, she's a mess, and she needs, uh, she's getting a little too big for her, her diamond britches over there on The Real Housewives, <laughs> yeah. And I love her, but anyway, okay. Always excited. <laughs> this is the best birthday present I will receive. <laughs> what could be my favorite story of the day week, month, or even second quarter 2022. Oh. 
Cracker Barrel is facing. <laughs> I'm going to try to read this without laughing. <clears throat> Cracker Barrel is facing backlash over this simple Facebook post announcing that they're now offering plant-based impossible sausage on their menu. No big deal, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> it seems many people were triggered by the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Leading to, and I'm not joking, thousands and thousands and thousands of comments. I present to you some of my favorites. <laughs> First, you just lost the customer base. Congratulations on being woke and going broke. Oh. That rhymed. That was rhyming. Mm -hmm. Next, don't you ever try to push that crap in my direction. <laughs> Stick to the basics that made your franchise a success, OK? Next, if I wanted a salad, I would in fact order a salad. Stop with the plant-based meat crap. Next, thanks Cracker Barrel. Now my family won't be able to dine there because of the troves of hippie stoner vegetarians invading my favorite chain restaurant and pushing their immoral commie lifestyle on me and my children. <laughs> Again, before I read my final one, I would just like to remind everybody, this is about sausage. My final one. I'll be taking my hard-earned money to Waffle House or wherever where we can at least smoke inside. I can't. I always say don't read the comments. I, I don't read, I, I, a couple years ago, I just, you know, you don't want that negativity. Mm -hmm. All I did last night was read the comments. I, I kept coming back to this uh -huh. because this is what, this, we're doomed. I mean, this just shows me we are doomed as a society. Because so angry. if you are so triggered mm -hmm. by fake sausage, because here's what they're missing. The pork sausage is still available. You know what I mean? You can still have your pork sausage. Cracker Barrel, Cracker Barrel addressed the outrage, the sausage outrage on Instagram yesterday. There we go. They shared this picture saying, where pork-based and plant-based sausage lovers can breakfast all day in harmony. That's right. I'm joking, but I'm not. And I've said a version of this many, many times on this show. And I have people in my life who I indirectly direct this to. It makes me sad when you are just so you spend your life being so outraged about everything. You think everybody's coming for you. You think everybody's against you. You think that just because Cracker Barrel, <laughs> just because Cracker Barrel is offering vegetarian sausage. I thank you. They're hateful, commie, vegetarian, hipster, Nazi. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's not that. It's just an option mm -hmm. that you don't have to take advantage of. No. It's fine, it's still the Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. They still, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and audience. I know, we gotta go. But also, when you do these protests, you're not hurting the man. You know who you're hurting? Vera, the hostess. You're hurting the servers, you know what I mean? And Cracker Barrel, I know, I'm from the, and my family's from the South. I love Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel exists in a lot of small towns, mid-side cities, where they're really the only restaurant. So you're not sticking it to the man by not going to the Cracker Barrel. You're really, uh, you're really hurting the people that work there. So stop it, relax, just don't order the damn sausage. Anyway, it's time to meet. They are really good, though. That's a phrase I never said in 48 years. <laughs> Time to meet today's JVIP. It's, uh, is it Le Lena? Lena? Lena, hi. Uh, she says she loves that the show represents modern times. 
<laughs> where people hate on sausage. Uh, she's from Manhattan and moved to Minnesota. Hi, sweetie. She says, I have a fun, positive vibe while keeping it real. And I have a great, I have great taste in clothes and food. Hey, girl, what's up? Anyway, <laughs> she gets a Jason Show mug. She's also to entered to win the monthly grand prize that includes coming to the studio to watch the show, $150 accessories gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $200 gift card from Woodhouse Spa. You know what's funny about that? I've read that 700 times, and I always look at the teleprompter. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Much more when we come back. Back after this. Go order the sausage. Let's make it a good day. I love that poor Aaron put the one guy in the corner over there. It's like, it's like the guy corner. What's up? Yeah. Oh, well, there he is. Right there he is. There's our, there's our dude, Cam. You see me fire Kendall from, uh, from the show every now and then. It's always fun, which is why she's always on the lookout for other careers. Today, she's finding out if she has what it takes to clean up after polar bears at the Como Zoo. A warning? You may want to put down your breakfast, and I really do mean that. It's time for our latest Kindle Tries, your 9 to 5. We don't feed them our seals. So that would be sad. You know, we love our seals. They stay <laughs> over there. number one? Yeah. Do I want no, to know the answer no, question? No, we don't feed them our seals. <laughs> so this is our diet board up here. So they get herring. Um, they're getting what we call feline. It is not ground cats, we promise. That is, it's a ground meat that our large cat carnivores also eat. Got it. Um, here's, here's the feline diet. Um, they're getting, Neil is getting some special little trout today because he's oh. an old man and deserves it. So now we go feed? Well, we're, we're going to bring them in and, um, and then kind of watch them feed a little bit, and then we'll head out to clean. I just found out, no, I'm not handing the polar bear fish. I'm going to clean first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, polar bears are the only animals that actually hunt humans. Great. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> something this big before. Right now we're trying to secure the bears inside. So before okay. we go out to clean, they have to be safely in here. Otherwise we become enrichment toys and that would be very fun. It'd be the last thing we ever did. And our heads would squish like watermelons. I guarantee you, maybe we can, oh, we don't have watermelons or else we Should could. Should I have signed a waiver for this? Like this is really, really cool. <laughs> We do not go in until another keeper has checked the locks. One of truth. This is called getting into the bear den. So if you did your job wrong, we're all going to be mauled and eaten by bears? Pretty much. So you're safe to go in here if you want to video some poop. I'm just going to grab our poop sled. It's big poop. Really big bear poop. So this is Poopy McPoop sled. So I'm gonna give Poopy McPoop sled to you. Well, here, let me get this real quick Poopy so we can we can go up and out. So one, two. Can you explain to people the, no. the smell in here? It's like dead. Oh, we're totally ready <laughs> to go out and scoop poop. Okay. All right, follow me on I out. I got the sled. Okay. Oh, I think I just stepped in some, and that's not a joke. Oh, oh look at that, nice footprint. <laughs> <laughs> so the key to scooping, scoop and lift. There's a pile for you. I am not doing this slowly. If you don't get it on the first shot, this is your own personal problem. OK, Eric? Can, we, can you describe it? Because I can't really show it on uh, camera. What is it? They eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, OK. Like you want to give oh, her a grade she, on her poop scooping? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, she got a 9 out of 10. I, you know, the mostly for entertainment value. <laughs> I just love you carrying that poop sled around so much. You know, Kendall, somebody's going to have to wash that sled. No. I'm really sorry I stepped in your shoes. 
That's what they're for. Sure, I'd it's never happened So before. I'd rather you step in it with those than your own personal ones. Well, I was like convinced. I was like, I'll be fine. I can do it. I can. And then I literally, like before we even got out there, what's the first thing I do? Step in poop. <laughs> My foot well, pulled up and I was like, oh. Well, like you saw the poop that we Kendall joins me now. <laughs> You can tell Eric edited that. <laughs> um, you were way closer to the Bears than I thought you were going to be. Um, I was right in there, and because it's Eric, he didn't even show the fun part where I put their food out for them, and I laid it out beautifully and carefully so that all the little kids could come and watch them oh, eat their food. Oh, why show that when we can show Poopy the Poop Slime? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was so fun, though. It was so fun. Thanks to our friends at the Como Zoo. If you have an, a gross idea for Kendall, <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a weird job? Let us know on our, on our social media channels. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Bravo to you, though. I mean, that thing was like 30 pounds. <laughs> Gross. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Well, as we mentioned earlier, today is my 48th birthday, so the Jason Show research team thought it would be fun to play a little game inspired by the birth. It's game time, everybody. Here we go. Today's game is called Younger or Older Than Jason. It's very simple. I'm going to ask my friends behind me to see if they can guess if a celebrity that I name is younger or older than me. So. Come with me. Let's meet our first one. Where's Diane? Diane, get up for Diane, everyone. Why don't you come right over here, Diane? Diane, where are you from? Uh, Plymouth. Plymouth. Oh, I love the Plymouth. I lived there for many years. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Ryan Phillippe, older or younger? Oh, he is much older than you are. <laughs> and you're much more handsome than he is. Congratulations, <laughs> Diane. You win a car. You win a car. All right. Oh, you are you are right. Or no, you're he's younger than me, but just a little bit. He's 47. <laughs> Give it up for Diane, everybody. And he's also he's also what I would like for my birthday. Actually, yeah. Where's Gladys? Gladys? Come on, give up up for Gladys, everybody. Where are you from, Gladys? Hamburg. Hamburg, Hamburg you said? Mm -hmm. Where's that at? It's um, west of here. About okay. 30 minutes. Here we go. Next star. Look at the monitor there. James Marsden. Older or younger than me? Oh, definitely older. Definitely. God, I love this audience. Yeah. <laughs> and you are right. You are right. He turns 49 in September. Thank you, Gladys. Okay, where's Karen? Give it up for Karen, everybody. Hi, Karen. Hi. Looking pretty in the yellow. Thank you. Yellow is a birthday. Thank you, sweetie. Yellow is a really good color for TV. Okay, look at the monitor there. Tyra Banks, is she older or younger than me? Oh, definitely older. <laughs> I couldn't love this audience more. <laughs> you are right, she's older. That's right. She turns 49 in uh, December. Thank you, Karen. Okay, we have a few time for a few more. Where's Lisa? Lisa? Come on over here, Lisa. Give it up for Lisa. You ready, Lisa? I am ready. Okay. Victoria Beckham. Beckham, older or younger? Oh my goodness. That's I know. a tough one. I know it is. I know, believe me, and you won't offend me. Go ahead. But she's definitely older. <laughs> Jeff, we're going to need like six to seven uh, uh, Fords. Fords, yeah. Uh, you, honey, I'm a Cadillac. You're a Cadillac. Oh, she wants a Cadillac. <laughs> you are right, she's older. She, that, that's right. One more. Where's Tina? Where's Tina? Tina, come over here real quick. You're my last one. Okay, really quick. David Beckham. Hmm. Older, younger? Definitely older. I love you, but he's younger. There we go. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you very much. Thanks to our audience, everybody. And again, our boss, Mim, is buying you all a car. That's right. We'll be right back, everybody. Back in a moment.
stuff for a great cause. Kendall is uh, back with me to talk about a great teleprompter. Roll up, please. They fell asleep in the booth again. Yeah. <laughs> We gave them the what, vodka. What are they serving in there? Anyway. Birthday vodka. Uh, what's happening this weekend? Well, a lot's going on this weekend, but there's a couple things happening today we wanted to look at, too. Okay. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello the hell are you to my doing? sidekick sister from another mister and St. Vince's dance captain, Kendall Mock, I everybody. Wish. That's right. Hi. Good morning. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. No idea. Nobody told me. Just kidding. Happy birthday, Jason, my quick-witted, handsome, wonderful, beautiful soul of a human being friend. Um, I've always said it. I am your Padawan. You are my master Jedi. I'm so appreciative of not only what you've taught me professionally, but of course of our friendship. And I have one small request before your next birthday. I want Duluth trip round two shove you and I in the back of a very small uh, vehicle and bring us out to karaoke at a really great gay bar. That's all I want for your birthday for me. Love you. Oh, hey, Jason. Hey, I'm just trying to get your TV to work again. Hey, happy birthday, dude. I know that you're a little bit scared about being 48, but I'm 55. You got a long ways to go to catch up to me. It's a good age to be at, so have a great day. Hi, Jason. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful places in Ethiopia where I could have recorded this and wished you a, a happy birthday, but I decided to take you to the most magical place in Ethiopia I could think of, um, the airport at night. So that's, that's Ethiopia over, over back there. I could just be at Wisconsin Dells. Jason, I can't believe I've known you since 2000, when we were both in our 20s. Just never forget, you're older, I'm younger. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy 48th birthday, buddy. 48, wow. I remember 48. Didn't bother me that much. 49 didn't bother me either. Let me tell you about 50. <laughs> Wait till then. That's when the RV mails and letters start showing up and you really start to feel old. Huh. <laughs> well, I'll leave you with that thought. Have a great birthday, buddy. Hey, Stud Muffin. I hear it's your birthday. Na 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 na. To my wine brother from another mother, my favorite television host, my absolutely favorite neighbor, and my year of the Tiger Twinsie, I don't know what we would do without you. We are so very lucky to have you. You are a wonder and a talent, and I am wishing you the happiest of birthdays, my dear, dear friend. To the moon and back, cheers to you. Hello, Jason, and happy Happy birthday from your foodie queen. If I was with you right now, I would make you a gorgeous chocolate tort or an ice cream cake or your very own sparkly cupcake with the unicorn frosting. You know I love you. I hope you have a great birthday. And I think it's gonna be an amazing year. I really do. I think you're just gonna have a great year. So cheers for another trip around the sun and we will toast soon. Happy birthday. Hi, Jason. I hope you're having a great birthday and that there's a little bit of Disney magic in every moment today. And if not, I'll try and bring some for you. Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. Happy birthday, Jason. You're one of my favorite coworkers here at Fox 9. I will always be your little BB in Baby. your pocket or on the show. Love ya. Happy birthday, Jason, 48 years old. I can't believe it. I remember when we used to pal around in our 20s, we were the oldest people at the NSYNC and Britney Spears concerts, but we had so much fun. Man, does time fly. You're pushing 50 now. You look great, you sound great. I'm so happy for you. And thank you for allowing me to be the backup to your backup studio audience coordinator. I really appreciate it. Happy birthday, enough said. Happy birthday, Mr. Matheson. Uh, I know I'm one of your favorite employees around here. I hope today is filled with all of the joy and respect that you deserve. Uh, here, the trip is going to be to Disney, which is very exciting. 
Um, I think this will be your first time down there, so if you have any tips, don't uh, be shy and reach out and ask, and I can certainly help you. Happy birthday, dude. Happiest of birthdays to you, Jason. It has been an honor to be part of your circle for so many years. So, have a great day, and may the force be with you. Can we use this to light the candles? Probably not, probably not. Happy birthday, Jason. Jason, happy birthday, my friend. I wanted to do something for you that no one else could do for you. I got Colin involved. You guys were supposed to be here about 15 minutes ago. I haven't seen yet, so I'm really hoping you guys hurry up because it's almost time. So, All right. Where are Colin and Jason? They're still not here. Uh, we have a reservation. Dax, Holt. What do you think, babe? This would have been so much cooler with Jason here, but oh well. Happy birthday, buddy. Maybe next time you'll show up. Oh. Okay, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll try to cry in the next segment. But, so let me just yell at Dax. So if you guys don't know, where he's at is Club 33, and that's like an exclusive club at Disney. And I applied to be in there, and I haven't heard anything, and he got in. He got in. He got in. You were supposed to go. What? Oh. Oh. What's this? Look at that. Oh, I was like, what the hell's under the creepy lure I'm feeling? <laughs> oh, let me. You know, it's not COVID safe to blow out the candle anymore. Well, just wave it out. Ow! <laughs> there we go, yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> okay, I have a lot to say. Well, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. It's hard to surprise me, but y'all got me. Jeff got me, thanks to Gerg and Rob King who put that together. I, I, another little comment a little bit later, but we're gonna eat some cake, find out what's under this, and uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> It's like an end, uh, end of the run kind of thing to say, but uh, end of the show kind of thing to say. Uh, but with the, with the birthday video, all the people you see there, uh, they're, they're, they're the best. They really are the best. And, and everybody that has a show or works at a TV station and they leave the station, they're always like, I work with the best people. Well, the truth of the matter is no, they don't because I do. Um, everybody, everybody that you saw in that video, there's, we don't have a bad apple on this crew and I really do mean that, we don't. Well, occasionally Ted, but anyway, I bet. <laughs> but we can pick on Ted because Ted never responded to Jeff's messages, but yeah. Columbia is not that far away. I'm allowed to have shade on my birthday. Anyway, <laughs> but no, um, everybody there, Ted and Eric and, and, the, and the lady standing next to me, we really are, it's not fake, it's not for a promo. We all really do get along uh, really well. We're all real friends. Um, you know, like Aaron Schwab, I've known Aaron since we were 11. Um, you know <laughs> what I mean, Jeff the same. Uh, and they're just the best group of people. We're small but mighty, that's what we always say. We're small but mighty. And even though we're not a, you know, we don't have a team of 300, we try every day to put on the best possible show for all of you. So all of those people, all of those people, all of those people 
are the best present I could ever have. I don't need anything else because they make, they make me look really good every single day, every single day. So I appreciate you and I appreciate you and everybody uh, that works here on the show. You're the best present I could have. Now, I mean, if Colin wants to give me something, I'm not gonna say no, but still. Monday, my buddy Melissa Peterman joins us live to talk about the premiere of her new show. I can't wait. Right now though, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.